Good morning, everybody. We are so glad you guys are here today. Uh, as Corey said, if this is your first time at Living Word Church, we're exceptionally happy that you guys are here. And hopefully you got a bulletin. And on the back of that bulletin is a little card you can fill out, take it to guest services, and they've got a gift for you. And uh, we won't harass you, but we just want to thank you for being here. You picked a good Sunday to come. And, but then, quite honestly, I think every Sunday is a good Sunday to come. Um, I do want to tell you a couple of things. This Wednesday night, we're having a, a, a kind of a church picnic thing where we're going to have food. And so if you already know about that, you already signed up to bring some food or something. But if not, just come about 6 o'clock, 6.30, somewhere in there. We'll start a little earlier. We're just going to have fun and food and hopefully some games for kids. And hopefully it'll get to be outside, but um, that'll be a lot of fun. I want to make you aware of the back to school bash. If you're not aware of that, there's a lot of stuff going on around that. We're going to do that before school starts, and a lot of churches coming together to provide backpacks and uh, physicals and different things for kids that they need totally free. And uh, would love to have you volunteer for that. If if you would sign up in the back, there's a sheet back there. And if you're going to volunteer, we'd ask you to pay buy a T-shirt. We're asking you to buy the T-shirt, but you can keep it for years to come. It's only $5.25. You, you just can't even hardly buy a plain T-shirt for that anymore. Um, but the point is that we're, we're going we're gonna to bless a bunch of kids in our community that day with free backpacks and school supplies. Um, they're going to get dental, vision screenings, hearing tests, and physicals, and haircuts all completely free. Along with a lunch that day, there'll be bounce houses, slides, lots of fun stuff going on. A lot of our churches are now getting on board. We're so thankful for that. It's not just Living Word Church. Yeah. Uh, never, never was supposed to be Living Word Church. We're, we're, we're wanting our churches to all come together, and, and they're going to do that. It's going to be at the Boys and Girls Club. You probably already know all this stuff, but if you didn't, I just want to kind of make you aware. Uh, check us out on Facebook. We'll be sharing a lot of that on there and on our website. It's already been in the paper. Uh, Pickens Progress has been great to help us. They're sponsoring as well. And uh, a lot of good stuff going on. But we just want to be part of blessing our community. And it's not about us. Amen. Not about us. Okay, it's not about us. It's about Jesus and God put, bringing his body together. So I'm, I'm super excited about that as much as anything. So we want you to be a part of that. So if, you're, if, if this is your first Sunday here, you can go back and, and, and watch on YouTube or our Facebook page or whatever, um, and our website, the sermons that we've had, the messages we've had about the Holy Spirit. We are in the middle, I think, we're somewhere about in the middle of this series. And I say I think because uh, when you say you're going to have a series about the Holy Spirit, it's kind of hard to say we're going to do this for two, three, four weeks, and then we're going to shut it off. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where your theology stands, but you don't, just, you don't just tell God what to do. God kind of tells you what to do. And so we're, we're trying to put that into practice and say, Lord, whatever you want us to do, we're going to do it for as long as you want to do it. And this may be the last week. I say we're in the middle of it. This could be the last week. I don't know. It might be next week. He says do something different, and we're going to do that. But I feel like we're somewhere in the middle because we're looking at what the Scripture says, what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit, and we're sticking to that. Um, we're not just going by my opinion or your opinion or some guy on TV's opinion. We're going by what the Word of God says, and that's it. And, and that's just where we're going to stay. So um, don't want you to be afraid, but I feel like we're probably somewhere in the middle of this series. Um, and next week we're going to talk about spiritual gifts, and uh, so don't, don't be afraid of that. We're not going to come in here clucking like a chicken or barking like a dog or anything. Um, but I want to look at what God's Word says about spiritual gifts. Um, but today I want to ask you a couple questions to start. Do you hear God's voice? There are times in your life when you hear God's voice, and maybe, maybe you would say, well, I don't know that I've ever really heard God's voice like audibly, like, like you're talking to me right now. I don't know that I've ever heard that, but I feel like God has spoken to me before. I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I could say I've heard God's audible voice. The closest thing I think I've ever had, and I've shared this before, uh, it'll be almost, when we get July the 17th, will be 11 years that our house burned. Uh, we had a, a house fire 11 years ago, July 17th, our house burned. We lost everything we had, everything. We walked out of there with nothing except the clothes on our back and the cars we were driving. 
And, uh, and uh, probably about a week after that, Donna had planted a garden. I know I shared this before for some of you guys, you new guys, this will be a new story. Um, but she had planted a garden and she had worked really hard in it and the beans were coming in and, and I went back to look for, for stuff around the house. You know, it was all charred and just gone. And, and I noticed that the beans were coming up in the garden. There were weeds everywhere by this time. And so I decided to start picking beans. And, and I was so mad at God because our house had burned and we lost everything we had. And our little dog died. And, and, and we were brokenhearted. And, and we lost everything that our kids had ever made. You know, our kids were grown then. And, and little things, drawings, you know, that you have on your refrigerator and all that kind of stuff. Little clay pots that they'd made. All that stuff gone. And I was mad. I was just mad, mad, mad. I was mad at God. And I remember going to the garden and jerking the beans off the vine. I don't know if you've ever picked beans before, but I was picking some beans, man. I mean, I was, I was mad. And I'm out loud. Luckily, no, we didn't have any close neighbors. This was family farmland. And I was picking beans, and I was yelling at God. Why would you let this happen? Why did this happen? You know, what's the purpose of this? And then I started thinking about our dog, you know, and I, I'm a dog guy. If you're a dog person, you know what I'm talking about, right? You just, we love our dogs, man. And our dog was like our baby. She slept between my legs at night. You know, she was like, she was my, my little white fuzzy baby, even though I'd given her to Donna. And I'm mad. And I'm like, why, why did this dog have to die? What good does this do? How are you going to get glory out of this dog dying? She never did anything wrong. She never hurt anybody. She never sinned or did anything. How are you going to get glory out of this? And the closest I ever came to hearing God's audible voice was then when he said, neither did my son. Clear, clear, clear as it could be. And I just broke into a puddle of tears. And I realized God wasn't done with me and God's not done with you. But I have to ask you, if God spoke to you today in the middle of your life, would it be an interruption in your life? Would it interrupt your plans? If God spoke something clearly to you, would it be welcomed or would you just kind of go, I don't know that I want to do that right now. I'm kind of liking, you know, maybe God's called me to a comfortable life. Maybe God's called me to live in Pickens County or Gilmer County or Cherokee County and have a nice home and have a good job and have nice things and, and some influence. And maybe God wants me to have a comfortable life. He, he, he may very well. I can tell you right now, God's blessed you with those things. He has certainly blessed you with those things. But if God spoke, would it be an interruption in your life? I think about the early church. When the early church started, I have to imagine that that was quite an interruption in those guys' life. And we read about this in Acts chapter 2, the beginning of the church as we know it now. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I love that. I love to read about that because it reminds me that that's why we gather. This is what the church is really about right here. That we, we come together and we support each other and we love each other. It has nothing to do with the walls. It has nothing to do with denominations or the name on your building. That's why I love doing stuff in the community with other churches because this is what the church is supposed, supposed to be about. That we come together and that every day we see people being saved. And I, and I read that and I kind of go, where did we miss it? Where have we missed it? Why are we not seeing people getting saved every day? I mean, maybe they are, you know, here and there and whatever. But, but if you read it, it says thousands. Thousands were coming to the Lord every day. And then they were persecuted and beaten and arrested. And, and this was their reaction to being beaten and arrested and threatened. In Acts chapter 4, it says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, 
and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. When was the last time, the last time, that you undeniably experienced the Spirit of God at work in your life? Supernatural, undeniable, no other explanation, but it had to be God. When was the last time you experienced something like that in your life? And do you crave that? Do you want that? Do you, do you need to have that kind of power in your life? And I've just got to tell you, if, if you want to serve the Lord, if you, want to, if you want to work for the Lord, you need that kind of power. You can't do anything on your own. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just saying there's some things we can do on our own. I get it. But if you want to see miraculous things happen, impossible things happen like we sang about, you've got to have the Spirit of God inside of you, moving in power, supernaturally, in ways that are unexplainable. Yeah. And, th and there should, I mean, I just, I just got to be honest with you today. There's so many times I go, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Than, than what we're experiencing, you know? And I grew up in a conservative church, I'm very conservative. I, I still kind of lean that way, but I know, I know, I know there's gotta be more to this, you know? And then every now and then you see God do amazing things, you know? It wasn't, oh gosh, was it a month ago that uh, Steve Thurman's mom was baptized here and her husband was baptized with her? She didn't know it. And, you know, she had just got saved like a few weeks before that. She came to get healing for cancer and got healed eternally. You talk about a miracle. That's a miracle right there. I mean, healing from cancer, that'd be awesome. That's what we, we go, that's the miracle. I go, no, that's not the miracle. The miracle is that one day she gets to walk into heaven. That's the miracle, because one day she's going to die. She's going to die by cancer or get hit by a truck or, you know, Steve's, you know, Mike is going to, like, strangle her or something. I don't know. I don't think any, I don't know that, what that'll happen, but I'm just saying we're all going to die someday. The true miracle is that Jesus gave his life so that, he, that we could walk into heaven one day, forgiven and free of all of our sin, totally forgiven. That's a miracle right there. But has there been a change in your life? Can you say, I used to be this way, I used to be that way, now I'm this way. I'm not the same person that I was. Amen. There should be a change and it should be obvious. 2 Corinthians 5 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. See, I'm not the same guy I used to be. I'm nowhere near where God wants me to be, I, I don't think. I mean, you, you know the, the church me. You, you know, some of you guys know me better than others do. And some of you know that I'm a little bit off. A little bit weird. It's strange. Those that are laughing know. I love to joke around. I, I love to make people laugh. I do. I love to play practical jokes on people, and I love to scare little kids. I like to play with fire. Um, I like to blow stuff up. You know, I'm just not all there. Yeah, I'm, I know I'm not alone. I don't know where I was going with that. That was not of the spirit, by the way. That was of the flesh. But I'm not the same guy I used to be. My mind's different. My heart's different. My, my thoughts and my values and, and the way I see things and the way I see people is different. My desires, what I want for my future, and, 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 and honestly, quite honestly, the whole reason I felt like God wanted to do this, this message, this series, is, is honestly for, for you. I want you 
to experience the presence of God in your daily lives to the point that you see miracles happening in your home, in your school, at your job, everywhere you go, that today when you go to a restaurant, if you go to a restaurant, that maybe you get a chance to share Jesus with the waitress. You might, instead of just saying, hey, my potatoes are cold, you might be saying, can we pray for you? Is there anything going on in your life? We're, we're about to pray. Can we pray for you? And she might just sit down and say, you know what? My husband left me this morning. And suddenly you go, you know, who cares if the potatoes are cold? This woman is broken and she needs Jesus. I'm just, I just want that to happen for you and for me on a daily basis. And then I think we'll see Acts chapter 2 happen. I think on a daily basis we'll see people get saved. When we take ourselves, our comfort out of the picture and say, I'm going to serve somebody else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk into this place and say, who can I bless in Walmart? Amen. Who can I help? I love Chick-fil-A, and I don't like it that they're closed on Sunday. So I might have to go to Zaxby's or somewhere. But instead of just putting my own feelings first, maybe I need to think about, can I help somebody? Can I bless somebody? I want to tell you something. If you go to a restaurant, and you sit down in a restaurant, and they bring you a bill, and you pay the bill, and the, the thought is that you should tip them, be a good tipper especially on Sunday. Please, please, don't go in there and give them a dollar or 50 cents. Be an extra good tipper. You know why? Because most of, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Maybe there's a reason. Most of those folks, when they, they say Sunday is the worst day. We get people in here and they're demanding and they're arrogant and they don't tip well. And they know you just came from church. Don't go. Just don't go. Go home. Make yourself a sandwich. If you can't, I'm just saying. Has there been a change in your life that you care about other people more than you do yourself? There's got to be a change. Romans chapter 8 says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You're controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. That scripture says if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you don't have Christ. Right. Verse 12 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Goes on to say, the spirit who you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That word Abba means daddy. Daddy. That he's so intimate with you. He loves you so much. Yes, he is way above us. He is far beyond our comprehension. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We can't comprehend God. I can't explain the Holy Spirit to you. I just can't. I'm a man. I'm not able to do that. But in the same way, he's so intimate that he says, you can call me daddy. You can pray to the Holy Spirit. You can pray to Jesus. You can pray to God the Father and just call him daddy and just say, daddy, I, I need you. I got into habit years ago of doing that just to train myself to say instead of praying. And I'm nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying you pray however God tells you to pray. If it's Heavenly Father, if it's Father God, if it's, you know, whatever it is. But I got into a habit many years ago of starting my prayers by saying, Daddy. Daddy. Because it trained me to see him as a loving father. Because I, didn't, I never knew my dad. My dad died when I was four. I never knew him. He was, probably would have been a great dad, but I just never knew him. And it just trained me to see God as a loving, intimate father that just cared about me. And that's okay. That's what that word says. We're adopted by him and can call him daddy. My concern is, is for people who say they're Christians who have not seen a change in their lives, that, that when you, you call yourself a Christian, maybe you've been in church your whole life, but there's been no change. 
I'm concerned about that. If the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, there must be a change. We cannot stay the same. Now, I love to play golf. I don't play golf much anymore. I used to play a lot. Billy and I have played. I'm, I'm not a very good golfer. But, but Billy, if, if I were to come to you and say, listen, I had this experience. Last night, in my dreams, Tiger Woods showed up in my dreams and said, I'm going to give you all my, well, let's say not Tiger. Who's, Tiger's not too good right now. <laughs> Ricky Fowler shows up, says, I'm going to give you all my ability. You're going to be able to play golf like I do. And I came to you and I said, Billy, let's go play golf next week. Ricky Fowler showed up in my dreams and said, you have this power to play golf now and you're going to be as good as me. And then we went out on the course and I'm smacking them in the woods just like I always did. You just say, well, that was a lie. That was ridic that's ridiculous. See, in the same way, we're saying we're Christians. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet we're poor mouthing and talking about how the devil's got us down and how, how we can't control what we do. We have no power over this sin. And the scripture says, no, that's not true. That by the spirit, you put to death that sin. You have the power to do it. You have the ability to say, no, in Jesus' name, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm not going to be tempted by that sin. I'm not going to fall into that. I have power over that addiction. It doesn't control me. I control it by the spirit of God that lives inside of me. And you've got to put it to death. And I'm concerned that there are people walking around that say they're Christians that, that there's no evidence of it. Wow. Last Sunday, we were blessed to, to sit in a, in a building where there were people sharing their testimonies, ladies sharing their testimonies of, of things that God had done in their lives. And I was struck by this one lady who was older than, than Donna and I. Not, not, you know, she was had to be around 60s or 60s, mid-60s maybe, and said, I've been in church my whole life. She said, I, I got saved this weekend. But she said, I've been playing church my whole life, and I had everybody fooled. Amen. She said, except for my husband. My husband knew. But nobody else knew I've been playing church my whole life. My concern is that there's a lot of folks like that lady that have been playing church their whole life. They've been sitting in a service like this and known that at times God has drawn them and, and said, I want to have a relationship with you. And, you, and you, somehow you're, you're deceived into thinking that you have a relationship because you sat in a church your whole life, but there's been no change on the inside. And I just want to caution you, listen, there must be a change. You must repent. Your mind must be different. Your heart must be different. There has to be, even on the outside, an obvious difference from who you were to who you are. Right. But don't, don't, let me, don't let me confuse you into thinking that you have to be perfect because you can't be and you never will be. You need Jesus. Amen. You can't live this life without him. Amen. And you're not going to walk into heaven without him. But you can't even get through this life without him. I, I'm just telling you, like when our house burned and things happened, I don't know where I'd have been without Jesus. I can imagine where I would have been. I don't want to imagine where I would have been. Tough stuff's going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. And without him, how are you going to make it? I, I don't know how people without him make it through hard times. You need him. But there's got to be a change. There's got to be a change. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. I mention that because I've said it before. I said it a couple weeks ago and last week. You have the ability to say no to God. You can quench the spirit in your life. You can say no. Next week, I'm going to talk a little bit more about gifts of the spirit. So I don't want you to miss that. Galatians 5 says, so I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Isaiah 30, 21 says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I love that scripture. Even in Isaiah, 400 years before Christ, it's talking about the Spirit of God like a voice behind you. No matter where you go, it's talking to you, telling you where to go, turn left, turn right, stop, go forward. In the New Testament, there's many places, and we'll talk about that probably in the weeks to come, where it talks about the Spirit would not allow the Apostle Paul to go into some areas of the world. 
He wanted to go, but it wouldn't allow him to go. And then in other places, it would tell him to go. Sometimes the Spirit of God will tell you, no, don't do that. Don't go there. Even when you might see a need, you might see a need and go, I need to go do this or do that. And the Spirit of God might tell you, no, it might be that he has somebody else set up to go do that thing that you just think you need to do it. It's hard. I get it. You got to be discerning, but you got to be listening for God's voice. Are you listening? Are you willing to listen to what he has to say? I have a few questions for you, and then we're going to close. Do you believe that God is great? I mean, for you, for you, is God really great for you personally? Do you believe that God's way of living is best? Again, for you, are you willing to sell everything you have and go buy a field that has a jewel in it? Would you be willing to give up everything? God, your way of living is best. This is not going to make sense to the rest of the world, what I'm about to do. But I trust you so much, I'm going to do it. Are you willing to quit your job, sell your house, move to Jasper, Georgia? Move to Cleveland, Georgia? Move to Africa? Are you willing to talk to the waitress at the Mexican restaurant today? If God tells you to. Do you want to be in love with God? And I mean intimately, not just like I know him, I understand him, but like even in the beginning when, when in Genesis where it talks about that Adam knew his wife, it was talking about sexually, intimately, but it also says that God knew Adam, not sexually, not like that, but in an intimate way that he knew everything about him. On the inside, his thoughts, his heart, his desires, the things that nobody else knows about you, God knows. Your secret things. And you know what? He loves you anyway. He loves us in spite of it. Or do you want to be in love with him that way? And do you want power in your life? Do you want power in your life? Not just for you, but for you. But for others too. Do you want that kind of supernatural power in your life? for you and your family, for your children, for your grandchildren. And for people that don't know Jesus. And some of you, quite honestly, when I talk about that, I know this is true. There are some people in this room that if you were to be honest, you'd never say it out loud. You'd never say it out loud, certainly not in here. But you don't care about people that don't know Jesus. That's not a high part of your priority right now. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying it's not part of your everyday thought life. You got other stuff going on. You got marriage troubles. You got financial issues. You, you know, you got relationship issues. And people that don't know Jesus that you don't know is not a big priority. I, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying it's where you are right now. But if you want power in your life, you can have it. You can have the Spirit of God come inside of you and give you the power, but here's what will happen. I'm just telling you ahead of time. I'm not one of those that likes to bait and switch people. I want to tell you what's going to happen. If you, tell, if you say, I want all of God I can have, I want to surrender to Him, I want the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of me, you will change. You won't be able to help it. You will change. Your heart will change. Your desires will change. It might make you uncomfortable at times. But I'm going to tell you, you will find no more fulfillment than when you surrender your life to Jesus and let him take control of your life. Right. And you'll see people differently. See, I never wanted to be a pastor. And then I became a youth pastor, and I thought, I'm just going to be a youth pastor my whole life. I love teenagers. I still love teenagers and college kids. I love them. But then God said, no, I want you to do this. And I was like, but I really like teenagers. Adults are so hard to deal with. <laughs> and some of you think teenagers are hard to deal with. And they are. But I'm telling you, when God called us to this, I started praying, Lord, change my heart. 
Let me see people the way you see them. Let me love them the way you love them. Because I know I can't serve them. I can't do this without you changing me and making me love people the way you love people. And you know what happened? He started doing that. And I love you guys more than anything. I want you to experience more of God than I have. The Apostle Paul said, if I could, I would myself be a curse for my own brothers, my countrymen. I would lay down my salvation. He loved people so much that he said, I would almost even be cursed, you know, so that my people could experience the love of God. I want you to experience the love of God like that. But when you do, it's going to change you. Luke chapter 11, verse 13 says, If you then who are evil, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you, being a good father, though you're evil, know how to give your children good gifts, won't your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit even more? If you want power, if you want to be in love with God, you just have to ask, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I need that power living inside of me. John chapter 3, verse 34 says, For the one whom God has sent, speaks the words of God, and God gives the Spirit without limit. So when you ask, and you say, I want all of God that I can have, the Scripture tells us that God gives the Spirit without limit. He'll give you all that you need and more. All you have to do is ask. Now that sounds easy, and quite honestly it is. But isn't it true that it's much easier it's really easy to pray about God's will for your future, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, God, help, help me 10 years from now. Help me see where you want me to be in 10 years, in five years. What job do you want me to be at? What college do you want me to go to? You know, uh, who do you want me to marry someday? You know, what, what, what do you want us to do in, in our retirement years? It's easy to pray about God's will for your future. It's a lot harder to pray and submit to what God wants you to do right now. Right now in this moment, I'm going to ask you to stand. And they're going to do another song. But in this moment, I just believe so much in the Spirit of God that if you pray that prayer and you say, God, I want you to speak to me. I need to hear your voice. I want you to... I want you to speak so clearly that I have no doubt what you want me to do. Not 10 years down the road, five years next week, right now in this moment, in this service at 1158. I want to know right now what you want me to do right now in this moment. And if you pray that prayer with an obedient heart, he'll speak to you. Now, he might say something weird to you. He might say, I want you to go up and I want you to lay your hand on this person's shoulder and pray for them. He might say, I want you to go up and just say a word of encouragement in somebody's ear. He might say, I want you to go to the altar and get right with me. I want you to get on your knees and humble yourself and repent and I'll forgive you. But you gotta have courage to be obedient to him. Are you willing to do what God tells you to do right now in this moment? If you want prayer, there'll be prayer team members probably on the sides over here. They'll pray with you. If you want somebody to pray with you, they'll do that. If you just want time with the Lord, but I'm asking you now in this time to be obedient to Him. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Thank You, Lord, that You speak clearly through Your Word. There's no doubt when we read Your Word that it's You speaking. And Lord, right now in this moment, I'm asking, Lord, that we would worship You and that we would be obedient to you. Lord, speak to us. Lord, for the person that needs to come to the altar and just spend some time with you, just needs some encouragement, needs some hope, give them courage. Lord, there are people in this place or watching online that they've never surrendered to you. They've never turned their life over to you. They've never really made you their Lord. Lord, I pray that you would draw them to you, give them the courage to just submit their lives to you fill them with your Holy Spirit. God, we need a fresh anointing of your Spirit. We need a fresh infilling of your Spirit 
so that we can be used by you when we go back to our jobs and when we go to a restaurant today. We need you, Father. So speak to us whatever you have for us to do. Give us the strength and the power to be obedient. This time is yours. been fooled into thinking like this lady that they played church their whole life and had people fooled. God, you know better. Don't let them be fooled, God. Let them submit and surrender to you now and you will lift them up and you will bless them. God, I'm praying for marriages today. God, that you would strengthen our marriages. That we would prioritize you, Jesus, first and our spouses that you would strengthen the marriages in America today. But I'm praying that you'd strengthen the marriages that are in this room right now. God, that you would be the center of every husband and wife that's in this room right now or watching online, whether they're here or not. God, you have the power and the ability through your Holy Spirit to bring husbands and wives together in your name. And I'm asking you to do that, Lord. For some, I'm asking you to do a miracle. God, I'm asking that the children, whether they're small children or teenagers or young adults, would see their need for you. And that their lives are not going where you would want them to go. For some, it's not even where they want to be. And that the answer is you, Jesus. I'm asking you to do miracles today, God, and you're able to do that. And I'm praying that today, before the sun goes down, before, before somebody goes to sleep tonight, that they will surrender their life to you, that they will get real with you and you will be real with them. Lord, I'm asking you as we leave this place today that you would use us for your glory, to have boldness, to be able to speak the word of God boldly to somebody without fear, that we would use the name of Jesus, not just God, we would use the name of Jesus. You are the one that changes lives. And we thank you for changing our lives. Lord, whatever it is you have for us next in this community, we're ready for it. We want you to use us. Bring our churches together, Lord. I pray for every church in this county that calls on the name of Jesus right now. Whether they've already let out or, or not, doesn't matter. I pray for them, God, that you would bless them and use them to further the kingdom of God. In your name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, I want to let you go, but I want to tell you something real quick before you get out of here. We are doing lunches for Must Ministries this Wednesday at 2 o'clock. You may not can come and help do that. If you can, come help us make some sandwiches. But there are still some things in the board in the lobby that we need, bread and all kinds of different things. Would you pick up one of those cards and then bring that back to us by Wednesday at 2 o'clock? Just drop it off at the church. Still need stuff to make those lunches with. And you would help, you'll help, help make 300 lunches by doing that. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. All right, guys, go have a great day. Hug somebody before you get out of here, though. See you next week.